We begin with a story that made headlines worldwide. Arrested with a group of other women for wearing trousers, an offense to public decency, Sudanese journalist Lubna Ahmad Al Hussein decided to write a book about the experience by publishing 40 coups de fouet pour un pantalon, which translates as 40 lashes for a pair of trousers. She hopes to raise international awareness about the situation of women in Sudan. During an interview in Paris, she spoke about the arrest and her campaign for women's rights. Take a look. Lubna Ahmad Al Hussein, thank you for being with us tonight. I'll just remind our viewers that we are in Paris, although you usually live in Khartoum, the Sudanese capital. Since the incident involving the trousers, you are, are you free to move as you like? Uh, the Sudanese constitution should guarantee me freedom of movement and residency. Unfortunately, I was banned from traveling by plane, car or boat until the end of the judicial proceedings. I tried all the legal means possible to have the ban lifted, but it didn't work. I had to find another way to leave Sudan. Since leaving, I've had lots of invitations from Arab and European countries, but I can't actually go back home. In your book, 40 Lashes for a Pair of Trousers, which you co-wrote with French journalist Jenan Karetaja, you talked about what happened to you in 2009. You were arrested with 15 other women in a Khartoum restaurant. Your crime? To be wearing trousers. Tell us more about this arrest. Last July, I was arrested in a restaurant with other women who were wearing trousers. There were about 400 people there when the police burst in and arrested us for wearing clothing that they considered offensive. We were taken to the police station and made to do some kind of fashion parade. After lining us up against the wall, we were told to walk up and down so they could decide what type of clothing we were wearing. We were charged and then sent to a tribunal where we were fined and sentenced to be whipped. I refused to accept the sentence and filed an appeal with my lawyer. That was when my story started to make world headlines. Under Sudanese law, you had broken Article 152 of the Penal Code. What exactly does the article say? Article 152 of the Sudanese Penal Code concerns offences against public morality. I was in a place with 400 other people and didn't offend anyone. Neither did the women who were arrested with me at the same time. The only people offended were the police. This article of the Penal Code is ignominious and is a travesty of justice because the person responsible for applying the law and explaining it is the policeman himself. Punishment is extremely harsh and is also a violation of human rights. Article 152 is in itself a scandal. The law is an exception. And the special tribunal that judges the accused does not allow them to defend themselves. The resulting sentences are unfair. The article only applies to women and has led to thousands of women being arrested and sentenced. In 2008, there were 43,000 arrests. Can you believe that? 43,000. I didn't make up these figures. They come straight from the head of the Sudanese police force. So the arrest came as no surprise. 
Well, it still came as something of a surprise. Article 152 has been in place since 1991. In 1997, there was an uproar when the police went into the campus of El Afad, a women-only university. Several women were arrested, judged and flogged. There was outrage in Sudan. Since then, the police seem quite happy to go around arresting women in the street, in public places, in markets or outside buildings and restaurants. Let me tell you something. There are two types of police force in Khartoum. There is the police force to maintain law and order and who like taking it out on women. Then you have the tourist police. They make sure all is safe in the five-star hotels. Unfortunately, I didn't choose the right kind of restaurant. It wasn't a five-star establishment. Most of the women arrested with you that day were flogged. You were not. And during your trial, you refused to take advantage of your diplomatic immunity, although as an employee of the United Nations, you had that right. Why refuse? Not everybody in Sudan works for the UN, 1,000 out of a population of 40 million to be exact. My arrest was an opportunity for me to protest against this law. So I resigned from the UN in order to lose my diplomatic immunity. In fact, I didn't need this diplomatic immunity to defend myself. I even read in the national press that I was going to be granted a presidential pardon. I refused because I don't want to be treated as an exception. Either the law is just, in which case it should be applied to everybody, or it's unjust and should be repealed. We'll be catching the rest of that interview in the second half of the show. Now to Eastern Africa for another story on women's rights. In Tanzania, questions of sexual equality and autonomy for women are debated in public. An NGO is championing the cause. Ellen Gonsman now reports.